This video is the second linear regression tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to do a hierarchical regression in R. To begin with, you will need these two packages installed, the readXL package and the quantsyc. Um, you only need to do this once, as I always say. Um, you have to do this every time you open up R, and this will allow you to read in your Excels and allow your beta values to be easily produced. If you've done the first video, you'll have already done this. You will need to pull these two things up from the library as well. So just your library command and then quantsyc and read Excel. You need to do this each time. And then we're going to read in this data set. This is my path to it. Obviously you'll have to edit it to create your own path. And we've got a different data set this time, which is um, available in the Google Drive folder, which is linked below the video. And it's just regression data too. Going to read that in. This is the same as last time. If you didn't do the last tutorial, I'll quickly run through it. We've got hate on the 1 to 30 scale, that's how much you hate the sound of my voice. Stressed on the 1 to 7 scale, how stressed you felt during the tutorial. Prior ability, your previous ability in stats and other packages. From 1, none at all. 7 is very confident in other packages. Age is age, sex is the sex of the participants, one is male, two is female. I won't go into any of that in any great detail, but there we go. So in the hierarchical regression, you, you split your model into separate blocks. In this example, what we're going to do, we're going to have our first, first block, so our model one. We're going to put in sex and we're going to put in age. And then in model two, we will put in prior ability and then in model 3 we'll put in stress the effect. And what the hierarchical regression will do is going to tell us the amount of variance sex and age predict and whether that's significant. Then it will tell us the amount of variance prior ability predicts in hatred of my voice after controlling for the variance that was already accounted for by sex and age and it'll give us a f chain statistic and the p-value for that then it will tell us the amount of additional variance that stressed feeling stressed while doing the tutorial predicted after controlling for the variance that was accounted for by these two levels as well what we're going to actually do is fill in this table here. And you can see I've got two sets. We've got cumulative and simultaneous. We've got R squared change and F change statistics. And these are going to be put next to step one. So in step one, what's the R squared change? What's the F change? Step two, what's the R squared change? What's the F change? And step three, what's the R squared change and the F change? The simultaneous model is just our regression coefficients, confidence intervals and p-values and I'll deal with that at the very end. I'll deal with this section which is the different section first. So running a hierarchical regression in R is quite straightforward once you understand your models. So these are our models and we already know from our previous tutorial how to create a model. We would ask for model 1 so what's model 1? Model 1 is a linear model in which we are predicting hate, use the autocomplete there, and our predictors are sex and age. What's model 2? Now, the way you would write this is you'd say well, model 2 is hate, and then we've got sex, age, and now we've added prior ability, and model 3 is our linear model, hate,
and we add stress to it. So these are our three models. And we can just run these three models. As you can see, it doesn't actually do anything here because we haven't asked for our model summary or anything like that. Because we're not actually going to do that yet. What we're going to do is we're going to fill in this table step by step. So we're going to ask for our R squared to change number two. And what that is, so that's the summary, model two. And after that, we want the R squared statistic. Help if you spell it right. And to get the R squared change, we've got the model two R squared change, which is the R squared associated with this minus the R squared associated with that, which gives us the R squared change. Because if we know the variance associated with that and the variance associated with that, the difference in the two variances is the amount of change in variance explained. So instead of retyping it all, we can just and paste that and model one. So that is going to give us the R squared change for step two. So the difference between step one and step two and the variance explained. And we just type R squared change two to get that. Of course we can also give an F change which is the whether the amounts of variance that is explained by this step is it significant so to do that it's um, an easier process because we just say Hanover model 1 model 2 test equals F so this is going to do an F test for the difference between the two models between model 1 and model 2 F test. Is it significant or not? So if we run this, this gives us our R squared change and our F change here. Here is the R squared change, so it's about 3% of variance. So after controlling for the variance accounted for by sex and age, we predicted an additional 3% of variance. And then it gives us our ANOVA information here. Degrees of freedom, 1. 226, our F statistic 7.78 rounded to two decimal places, and the p value for that is 0 0.00573. So, in the context of our table, we have added this piece of information here alongside step two. We can add our R squared change, our F change, and put the degrees of freedom in brackets first, which is 1226, and our F value. 7.78 and we can just star it for the level of statistical significance here just because it's quite a busy table already we could have another column with p-value in for that if you wanted but I'll try to keep it a bit simpler so that's our first step so now what we want to do is see what the change in variance explained is if we add our stress so in step three so after controlling for the variance that sex age and prior ability accounted for does stress predict any additional variance and is that statistically significant amount of variance. Well to do that it's the same process as above so in fact we can just copy and paste it and we'll call it R squared change 3 and now we want the difference between model 3 and model 2. We just need to copy that over there so this now is the R squared for model 3 which is everything in it subtracting the R squared for model 2, which is everything but stressed. So that will tell us the proportion of variance accounted for by the additional variable that's in model 3. And then our ANOVA is comparing the difference between model 2 and model 3, and whether the difference in variance explained by the two models is significant. So we can highlight that, click run, and as you can see, this predicts about an additional 2% of variance. So rounded up would be 0.02. F statistic along with the degrees of freedom and p value can be found here. Degrees of freedom are 1225. F statistic is 4.60, and that's just about statistical significance. P value 0 
So we can add it to our table here. R square change, F change, and the degrees of freedom filled in there. Now, as I mentioned before, there is something missing and we haven't done it yet, which is step one. The step one is not a proper R square change in as much as it's just predicting beyond the intercept only, really. So if we want to get the R squared change and the F change for that, well, that's basically the R squared and the F for that model. So we've run model one, so we just type summary model one. And there you go. For model one, all the stats just appear at the bottom. So the R squared is 0 0.03 degrees of freedom of 2227. Our F statistic is 3.51 and our p value is 0 0.03154 and then we can just add that to our table so the first two predictors predict 3% of variance and here's the degrees of freedom and our f change along with the star to show that the p value is less than 0 0.05 so that covers all the different steps in the model we set up our hierarchical regression there as well and you may also wish to report just the overall model. So the amount of variance, everything explains together. You've partitioned the variance here, but you haven't said overall, all these variables considered together, how much variance do they predict? Well, you can pretty much work it out because it's just the R squared changes added up. So three, three, two. So it's 8% of variance. And if you want to double check that and you want to get those, that information, well, that is summary model 3. Model 3 is just everything considered together. So if you look at the bottom there, and you can see our multiple R squared, 0 0.088% of variance. Our F statistic is 4.96, degrees of freedom of 4.225, and our P value is 0 0.0007. So less than 0 0.001. And you just write this up here. Saying overall, the model predicted approximately 8% of variance in hatred for Paul Christensen's voice. We bought the R squared, our F along with the degrees of freedom and the P value. So the last thing that we need to do, and because we've got our summary for model three, we've already got these statistics appearing here, we need to fill in the other part of our table. So this bit here, we actually haven't got you that information yet. So where does all that information come from? Well, it's our model three. Now, sometimes people do break these things down um, and you'll see um, the so sex and age when they're on their own in the model, sex and age when they're in step two, sex and age when they're in step three. And just for, for clarity, and generally how I tend to report these, I tend to always report them from the simultaneous model. So when all the things are considered together, because that is essentially reality all these things do exist together so what well, so when when i'm writing on the simultaneous model that just means when everything is put into the regression equation together which is model three which is step three or last model you, we did this last time so i'm not going to integrate detail on this but here's your regression coefficients it's standard error and it's p-value regression coefficients standard error p-value, regression coefficient, standard error, p-value, regression coefficient, standard error, and p-value. And as you can see, uh, this is slightly, this is a different data set than last time. You can see there's a significant association between sex and hatred for my voice with a negative association. Males are coded as one, females are coded as two. So because it's a negative association, that means the people coded as the lower group, so in this case one, hate my voice more, so males hate my voice more than females. Age, no association whatsoever. Doesn't so matter how old you are, you hate my voice just the same. Prior ability, negative association. So as people's prior ability increased, their hatred of my voice decreased. And stressed has a positive association, meaning the more stress they felt during the tutorial, the more they disliked the sound of my voice. And we can add that information into this table. But remember, we should also ask for our confidence intervals as well. So how do we ask for confidence intervals? Confidence intervals, model three, 
level equals 95. We've got 95% competence intervals. There we go. So we can now use this information here to populate our entire table. And as you can see, we've got our regression coefficient standard error, competence intervals for it, and our p-value. All this is there, and we just take them out of these parts of the table. As I say, we don't always you don't really need to put the t-statistic in. You can just work that out yourself, because it's just the critical ratio between the regression coefficient and the standard error. You may want to just report the beta values and the p-values. If you want to do that, you need to make sure you've got your quant site package isn't ready, so you've taken out your library. And then, you, and then you can type your linear model beta and model 3. You can run that, and this gives it as beta values instead. So instead, you could make your table look like this, in which instead of reporting regression coefficients of standard error and the competence intervals, you could just report the beta values. So we can just take these beta values from here and put them directly into this table. So it's a simpler table. It's you know up to you really which one you report. The good thing about betas is they're directly comparable. So in this case, you can see the strongest predictor is prior ability, followed by sex, followed by stressed. There's no association really at all with age but you know as you can see in these models there's actually not a great deal of difference between them. That's how you can produce a hierarchical regression in R. It's a relatively straightforward procedure and um, as I say this complete script can be found below this video along with the data that it was based on. And um, the next video in the series is going to be um, a series of assumption checks for linear regression.